to say that he's the Lord most high. He's a leon. He's highly lifted up. 
Lord, we exalt you. We give you praise. For you are the most high God. You are highly lifted. You are highly exalted, O oh God. There is none like you, O oh God. None can compare to you, Lord of Lords. None can compare to you, King of Kings. We bless your name and we exalt you. Just worship the Lord this morning. For he is worthy, he is worthy, he is worthy. We give you honor, we give you praises. For you are the Lord most high, O oh God. You are the Lord most high. We bless you for you are the Lord most high. We give you praise for you are the Lord most high. This morning we give you praise as O King of all the glory. For you are highly lifted up. You are highly lifted up. You are highly exalted in our midst, in our lives, O God, in our country. You are lifted, O King of all the glory. In our situation, you remain to be God. Hallelujah. Yes, you are the Lord most high. 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 Say yes, you are. Yes, you are. Declare you are the most high. Most high. Yes, you are the yes, Lord. You are the Lord. Yes, you are the most high. Pastor Collins from All Nations Pefa Gikomba, and I welcome you to our online service this morning, just to encourage you from the scriptures, and I believe God is going to minister unto you. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our God and our Savior, we thank you so much 
because of your word. And even as we share your word this morning, we ask of your guidance, of your Holy Spirit to speak to us. And we bless you that you may open these scriptures to our hearts and to our minds, that we may receive it to the glory and to the honor of your precious name. Loving Father, as I share your word, use me in Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. I want to uh, share a scripture from the book of 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 1 from verses uh, 3 and to verses ele uh, 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from, uh, sorry, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3 to verse 11. The scripture says, Blessed be, the, be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our tribulations, that we may be able to comfort them who are in any trouble by the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the suffering of Christ abounds in us, so our consolation also abounds by Christ. Verse 6, And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same suffering which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation, and salvation. And then verses 7, and our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the suffering, so shall you be also of the consolation. Let me jump to verses 11. You also, helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us, by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. I want to share uh, this morning on a topic that I've entitled, Trusting God When You Don't Understand. Trusting God When You Don't Understand. I know one or other times you felt in your life that you don't un really understand what you're going through or what is just happening around you or what is happening around your nation. Like right now we are facing a pandemic, a situation that is all over the world. It is not only in Kenya, it is on not only in your locality, but it is all over the world. And so many people are asking, why is it happening? Why is it happening to me as a person? Or why is it happening to us as believers? But there are times and moments that we will not really understand what God is doing in our life. The truth is that God loves us and he has good plans for us. So the love of God will never demean. The love of God will never grow bigger. The love of God will be constant. And in as much as we don't really understand uh, whatever he's doing, we really need to trust upon him. There are several lessons that I've learned through this scripture that Paul uh, wrote to the church of Corinthians. Indeed, Paul was a missionary who faced several challenges in life. Paul, at one time, he was beaten by a snake. Paul was thrown in prison. Paul was beaten by a rod. Paul faced the storms in the sea. Shipwreck was all over him. And so we can really learn 
something from the life of this man called Paul. And Paul has written almost a half of the New Testament books to encourage us even as we continue in this journey. And one of the famous quotes of Paul is, uh, I press on towards the mark of the higher calling. Paul was this one kind of a person that despite the challenge that he faced, he could still urge believers to press on to the mark of the higher calling. In prison in Philippians, Chapter 4, Paul speaks about rejoicing. A book that was written while he was in prison, but he could still afford to encourage other believers to rejoice even in times of pain. And so when I speak about trusting God, even when we don't understand, I'm reflecting on the life of this man called Paul. One of the lessons in verse 3 of 2 Corinthians chapter 1 that I see is that Paul says, Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and the Father of all comfort. One of the things that Paul is telling us is that we have a God of comfort. Moments that we do not understand, God is our comforter. God is not like a prefect. He's not like a supervisor. But God looks for the opportunity of comforting us even in moments of pain, even in moments of discouragement, and even in moments that we do not understand. And so Paul says that we have a father, we have a God. The God of our father who is in heaven, who is a God of all comfort. So even in this situation that you are facing right now, that you do not understand, God is a God of comfort. He will give you the strength. He will give you the ability. He will walk with you. He will never leave you because he's always there to comfort you, to provide every necessary thing that you need in your life. Number two, when Paul, when I'm speaking about trusting God when you don't understand, is that when we read in verse four, he says, who comforts us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them who are in any trouble by the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. The second reason why we need to trust God when we don't understand is that whatever we go through, we go through in order for other people to learn from us. Remember, we are believers. We are Christians. And the word Christians come from the joint word of Christ. In other words, we are coheres. We are related with Christ. So whatever thing that you are going through, maybe the pain you think cannot uh, be, uh, cannot Calm down. You need to reflect that it is for the sake of another person that God has allowed you to go through whatever you are going through. So Paul was not just going through the pain, but he knew that this pain was for another person to learn from it. And I want to speak to your life today. It might be your family. It might be your business. It might be anything, the sickness, the coronavirus that now people are running away from. But I know that as believers, God has just allowed it. That people may learn from us. And then the third thing, the reason why we need to trust God 
even when we don't understand, is that the reason why we suffer or the reason why we are going through the pain is because we are following him. We are related to Jesus. We are related to Christ. The pain that he went through on the cross of Calvary, the same pain is reflected in the life of believers. So, so long as you are following Jesus, there are so many tribulations, so many trials that are going to come our way, things that we'll never understand. So it is not a walk in the path. But as we follow him, we experience difficulties. Some of us may think that when you are a believer, you will never get sick. You will never die of hunger. You will never lack. But the moment you become a Christian, or the, 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 the little percentage that you have been in Christianity, we experienced that even believers go through whatever you are going through. And so my brother, my sister, it is not strange. Whatever you are going through, it is because you are related to Jesus Christ. And if Jesus suffered, if Jesus shed his blood at Calvary, if he was mocked, he was abused, he was despised, so long as we are related to him, all this, we are going to pass through them. And so you need to understand that when you don't under, really understand whatever you are going through, Whatever you are passing through is just showing you that you are following him. The Bible speaks and says many are the tribulations of the righteous. Many are the sufferings of the righteous. But the scripture does not end there. The scripture says that God will deliver him from them all. We have a hope. That in as much as we don't understand, God will deliver us from that pain. Another thing that you need to learn as we are trusting God when you don't understand is that it is for your own benefit. When you are going through the pain, when you are going through the suffering and the sickness, it is for your own benefit. Some have failed to represent Christ in a world of confusion. Some have compromised. And that is why God sometimes looked at you as a believer, somebody who confesses faith. There are better opportunities that you can represent him. So when you know that the suffering you are going through is for your benefit. It is doing good for you. You will understand the scripture in Romans chapter 8 and verses 28. When Paul speaks to the Romans and he tells them, For I know that all things worketh together for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. This moment of time, you might be such a one that is wondering, why should I continue trusting God? Why should I continue facing and worshipping my glorious God? I want to assure you this morning, it is for your own benefit. God has nothing to lose. I've heard of people say that I've, I'm going through pain. I want to live salvation. I don't want anything to do with Christ. But remember, God already is in heaven. We are the people who are trying and are moving forward as we persevere through the race that we may enter into the eternal glory. So it is for our own benefit. We need to continue trusting in God. Despite the challenge, despite the difficult situation, continue trusting in God. And then finally, in verses 8, 
Paul says, For we who not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble, which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure above strength, so that we were despaired even our life. This is Paul. He went through trouble. They were persecuted in Asia. They were almost giving up. They were tossed to and fro. But when Paul now reflects, he speaks in verses 11 again, that you also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. There are moments you will never understand, and I continue saying, you will never understand, you will never know what is happening. So in such moments, in as much as you've known it is for your benefit, the one more thing you need to do is to understand the power of prayer. The power that there is in prayer. Prayer is calling. Prayer is communication. Prayer is having contact with the supernatural. The natural may fail, but now when we connect with the supernatural, it gives us an understanding of the spiritual realm. And prayer will open up your mind. Prayer will open up your spiritual a being that it may understand whatever you are going through. This same Paul, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, had a thorn in the flesh. And he speaks about three times calling, praying, that God will remove the thorn in the flesh. But even as he continued praying, on the third time is when God spoke to him that my grace is sufficient for you. It was until that time that you communicated with God, he spoke with God, that God spoke to him back and he understood the reason why the thorn was there in the flesh. Brother and my sister, this morning you might be looking at the world. You might be seeing hopelessness all over. You might be looking at your family. And in the world right now, we are facing a lot of fear, hopelessness. But all this can be overcome, or we can overcome by prayer. Ask him in prayer. Continue speaking to him in prayer. A scripture comes in the book of Luke chapter 22 and verses 31 onwards, whereby Jesus tells Peter that Satan has asked for permission that he may sift you as wheat. But one thing that Jesus assured Peter is that I have prayed for you. There is power when we engage ourselves in prayer. This morning, you might not be understanding the situations all over you, situations that are surrounding you, left, right, and center. It might not even be the corona itself. It might be something bigger and greater, but you can connect with God through prayer. And we have a God who speaks we have a God who hears, and we have a God who answers. Elijah, a man in the same likeness, a man of the same flesh as me and you, he called up to God. He spoke to the heavens. The heavens were open. We can connect with God in prayer. And that situation will definitely come to pass. And so, brothers and sisters,
This morning, I was sharing about trusting God when you don't understand. In these moments of, that you don't understand, you can not only uh, uh, know that God is our comforter, you can not only also know that you are going through the same thing because of other people. Not only you can know that you are going through that situation because you are following Christ, but you can also know that you can connect to him through prayer and you will be comforted. Let us pray. Our Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you because of your word. Thank you because of speaking to your people today. And my Father and my God, let your word do its course and let your will be done. Thank you for blessing this man, this woman. Thank you for your favor upon them. Thank you for your victory and your healing. And thank you for your breakthrough. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.